When we consider the Exodus, one of the most important discoveries that was made was the city of Avaris, former capital of the Hyksos. The city of Avaris is one of the largest cities of Semitic Asiatics, and it was located west of the Orontes in the Nile Delta. And if you like this, this channel and wish to help out, please hit that subscribe button. And if you wish to help us financially, please consider becoming a Patreon member, buying my most recent book, or by helping out with our GoFundMe campaign to write a new book on the 10 plagues of the Exodus. Please see the information in the description below. Now, almost everyone, regardless of position on the date of the Exodus, agrees that Avaris was the city where the sons of Jacob originated. It is the largest Semitic city west of the Orontes River in Syria. And it had an uninterrupted occupation for hundreds of years. Avaris began in the 11th dynasty as a result of the end of the Neolithic wet period. Now, the Neolithic wet period was an environmental condition which caused damp weather across North Africa and the Sinai. This created conditions where there was lots of grassland, lots of trees, lots of savanna, and lots of game. And nomadic tribes from Libya and the Levant would hunt game in the Sinai and across North Africa. But when that, that Neolithic wet period came to the end, suddenly these tribes found themselves without game to hunt. So, they relocated in the Nile Delta, looking for greener pastures. Some of those tribes established their own city along the Plusiac branch of the Nile. This city became known as Avaris. Now, Avaris is located at Tel El Daba, which is very, very close to modern-day Kantir, it, and it's in the Nile Delta. The site is 250 hectares. And during the annual inundation, it was surrounded on all sides by water. During dynasties 11 and 12, even though Avaris was a majority Asiatic city, it was ruled by the Egyptian government that was located in the capital city of Lahun. But during Dynasty 13, when the centralized administration of Egypt sort of fell apart, the rulers of Avaris just sort of woke up one morning and decided, hey, nobody's in charge. Why can't we be in charge? And this began the Hyksos Dynasty, which is sometimes called the 15th Dynasty. And it's during this time that Joseph and his family emigrate to Egypt. Now, at the beginning of Dynasty 18, the Hyksos regime falls and Avaris is retaken by the Egyptians under the reign of Akmos I. And it's at during this time that a good portion of the population at Avaris is enslaved. But this begins the Egyptian rulership once again of Avaris. And it's during Dynasty 18 that the conquering king, Thutmosis III, establishes a palace in the northern part of the city of Avaris. And that palace becomes an administrative headquarters for the Egyptian government. And that fortress is occupied roughly until the reign of Amenhotep II, when it is abandoned temporarily and then reoccupied again by Amenhotep III. 
Now, early excavation reports at Avaris focused primarily on this palace district. And it's important to understand that this palace district was only five hectares, five out of 250. So what happened was when these early re excavation reports came out, it was said that the, the palace district was abandoned during the reign of Amenhotep II. This unfortunately led some people who believed in an early date of an exodus to conclude that the entire city had been abandoned during the reign of Amenhotep II. But later excavations at Avarist showed that the Semitic population, the Asiatic population of Avarist, had been occupying the rest of the site, in particularly the rather large and important Semitic district of the Temple of Baal. And the excavation reports now show that, that there was unbroken Asiatic occupation of Avaris from the reign of Akhmosa I all the way up to the reign of King Akhenaten. Then with a very, very short 15-year-ish break there, and then a re-establishment of the Semitic population there by King Tutankhamun, and continued occupation all the way to the Ramesside period. And when we look at the material culture of Avaris, what we find is that it is primarily Semitic city. But it is also has a sort of a cosmopolitan flavor. We do find Nubians residing there. There was a Nubian garrison at the fortress district of Thutmosis III. But it is still primarily a Semitic city with Semitic houses, Semitic pottery, they worshipped Canaanite deities, and were buried in Semitic-style tombs. Avaris continued on as a major city all the way through Dynasty 18. And at the beginning of Dynasty 19, Ramses II built his new capital two kilometers away from Avaris, which he called Peramses, the House of Ramses. So, for a little while, the beginning of the reign of Ramses II, all the way to the mid 19th dynasty, Avaris and P. Ramses actually coexisted as sister cities. But something very, very strange happens in that middle early to middle, Dynasty 19, Avaris is completely abandoned. In fact, the whole city is abandoned except for the port, which was called Perunefer. The port remained in operation until the end of Dynasty 20, being referenced sometimes as the port of Avaris. After the abandonment of Avaris, the city was still used, but now it became a graveyard. It was used for tombs from the city of Paramzes. So it's interesting to see that this city went from almost complete occupation to becoming a graveyard practically overnight. The importance of Avaris in our consideration of the Exodus is that it gives us a terminus date for the Exodus. The fact is that we have an unbroken occupation at Avaris of its Asiatic population from the beginning of Dynasty 18 almost all the way through to mid-Dynasty 19. This allows us to say, okay, if there was a point in the city's history when the Semitic Asiatics left in an accident style event, there is only really one candidate here that opens up as a viable alternative, which is during the reign of Ramses II. 
because it is at this point that we can actually show that the whole city left en masse. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible.